Mustafa. Two friends face off, lightsaber meeting lightsaber in flashing blows. Rivers of magma are backdrop to these dancing figures. They were a student and teacher once, and on this fiery planet there was still one lesson to be taught. Anakin launches himself high in an attempt to jump over Obi-Wan, but the older Jedi has a higher ground. A slice of concentrated light and Anakin is left broken and burning on the smouldering ground. Obi-Wan lowers his saber and retrieves Anakin's, leaving Anakin to scream his hatred watching his skin blister as it catches a light. As one mentor leaves, another steps forward. Palpatine rescues Anakin from an agonising end. After intensive care, Anakin awakens. Rage fills his body as he senses the death of his love, Padme. Reaching out to the Force, he twists it in his anger, breaking his restraints. His injuries and the subsequent care have left him a different man to the one he was. No longer a Jedi, a Sith Lord stands in his place. Padme flashes before him, and his anger is then directed at Palpatine. The Emperor had promised he could save her. Her death, however, provides Palpatine with the perfect fuel to direct Vader. Pain. The emotion to cement a being to the dark side. But Vader needed a reminder of their relationship. Palpatine directs lightning, electricity causing excruciating pain through what remains of Vader's human body. Another lesson is learned. Still smouldering, Vader follows Palpatine, having admitted the loss of his lightsaber. Palpatine explains the Sith's red sabers are functionally the same as the Jedi's, with one key difference. Kyber crystals, the Emperor continues, are living entities and can feel pain. Sith lightsabers are made red by making them bleed. Vader would have to earn a new lightsaber through violence. This would be a difficult endeavor normally, but even more so since the annihilation of almost every Jedi with Order 66. Finding a living one will be hard. Aboard an Imperial shuttle, the pair enter the mid-rim. The Emperor explains this is a calling Vader must do alone, but first he will need a ship. The ramp lowers on a rocky desert planet where a ship previously left for Vader has been stolen. However, if Vader embraces the dark side and bends it to his will, Nothing will stop him. Utilising his new armour, Vader filters the scenery until tracks become clearly visible. Like a predator hunting prey, he follows them. Nearby, two slavers happily admire their chance find. A fine ship, sure to bring in lots of credits once they find a buyer, but it is not their ship to sell. Suddenly, a piece of scrap slams into one of the slavers, Darth Vader stands above them, using the force to control more hunks of metal. More criminals pile out of the nearby shacks, opening fire on their dark attacker. Vader force pushes shrapnel through the air at lightning speed, ripping through their bodies. Palton manages to hit Vader with a laser blast. It's a short-lived celebration, however, as his reward is being slammed over the edge of a cliff. Few remaining criminals are swiftly dealt with and Vader secures his prize. Bright Home, a former outpost for the Jedi, now under the control of the Empire. With its former masters now gone, a squad of cloned stormtroopers now oversee Bright Home's Jedi artifacts. Scanners alert the troopers that an unidentified ship is en route to them, and is closing in fast. Vader maintains his course as ARC fighters issue verbal warnings about entering restricted space. His droid has the codes to de-escalate the situation and grant Vader access to the station. This is Vader though, even as a Jedi who was never one to shy away from a fight. Two fighters are dispatched quickly with bursts of fire from his ship. The other two regroup, forming on Vader's six. This matters not to the Sith Lord. Even without visual sight, Vader directs a rear gun sensing their whereabouts using the Force. Their ships explode behind him, leaving him free to enter the station. As Vader prepares to dock, the troopers race to defend their station. Blast doors designed to stop heavy firepower are no match for a powerful force user and represent little more than an annoyance to Vader, crushed and tossed aside. A stone Jedi sentinel watches over the troopers open fire on the invader. Under a barrage of blaster fire, Vader hurls troopers aside like toys and deflects shots with a wave of his hand. 
One shot does clip his shoulder, forcing him to seek cover. The troopers sense their chance as they have him pinned, but one powerful force push and the container becomes an offensive weapon under Vader. He is still very much outnumbered and even vulnerable without a weapon. It was time to even the odds. Vader reaches out and pulls a Jedi artifact from the wall, a lightsaber. The troopers don't stand a chance now, and Vader cuts them down in whirling flashes of green light. Vader has what he was looking for, he has a lightsaber again, but he drops it. This is not how it should be earned, not against lowly troopers. Leaving the discarded weapon behind, he heads further into the station. Finding the data center, he orders the droid to search for Jedi assignments prior to Order 66. Specifically, any Jedi who took the Barash vow. A penance that involves a disengagement from anything other than the Force. These Jedi would have sensed the purge, but would not have acted and would not be in hiding. This data search is halted abruptly as an explosive flies through the air. It freezes mid-air at the point of detonation as Vader uses the force to pause its deadly payload. Two troopers enter, realising that this is their chance to detain him and for them to make a name with the Emperor. No Jedi could concentrate on controlling the explosion and fight them. Vader coolly tells them their mistake. He is no Jedi. Still maintaining control over the explosion, Vader uses the force to break their necks. Slowly releasing the explosion in a way that will detonate the outpost, Vader escapes on his ship. His droid has completed the search. They are after a Jedi whose sole focus in the Order was to fight. Kirak Imphala. On the river moon of Alderlin, unaware of the sudden interest in him, Imphala is in training, controlling intricate objects in a delicate balance. A crackling purple rod swings down towards his nape in a blur of motion, but not quickly enough. Infalar's lightsaber is there in time to meet it, as he spins round to meet his assailant, a droid, Arex, his sparring droid, helping his master train. One force push and it is over however. No sooner had this duel ended, Infalar senses a presence heading towards them, something that wished them ill. Vader cruises in the planet's atmosphere, hunting his quarry. His droid picks up objects, hurtling towards him, but they're not missiles or ships. They're Infalar's training equipment, directed with such force and skill, they bring down Vader's ship. The crash does not deter Vader though, who continues his hunt on foot, but this is no helpless animal he is after. A wall suddenly rises up behind Vader, trapping him. Infalar shouts down from a cliff at Vader, asking if he was responsible for the deaths he felt. In no mood for conversation, Vader chokes him from afar. His will is met, however, and Infalar pushes him away. With the other Jedi gone, Infalar confirms that his penance is over, and he will now accept the challenge of Vader. First, however, he has his own challenges for Vader. The mountain he stands on is designed to test Jedi, with traps set along the journey to the top. Infalar sets one off. A deluge of water cascades onto Vader, flooding the canyon and forcing him under. But it is not enough. Vader parts the water, force flowing through him, more powerful than any torrent. He continues his ascent. Ahead, a perilously thin bridge to cross. He is not even halfway across when giant raptorans swoop down on him, talons ripping and tearing at him whilst Vader fights back, bringing many down. Infalar and Arax watch on through a screen, musing to what Vader might be. Infalar calls off the Raptorans, but not before Vader kills a few more as they make their escape. Traps aren't going to work here, and Infalar turns them off. It's time to face this head on. Suffering considerable damage from the ordeal thus far, Vader ascends the final staircase, Infalar watches on as Vader's robotic leg clanks on the first stone step. Vader sends rocks hurtling at Infalar, who swings at them with his lightsaber before one of the large ones knocks him down. Arax launches a futile attack at Vader, who catches him and rips an arm off before throwing the rest of the body away. 
now armed with the droid's weapon. He turns to face Impalar. Their blows meet, a show of strength now, as each aims to break the other's hold. It is Vader who breaks first, his robotic leg failing him, first cracking, then snapping entirely under the stress. Infalar sends his defeated opponent off the edge of the cliff with a force push into the dark depths below. At the foot of the cliff, Vader lives next to Arix, both broken. Unlike Arix though, Vader is not defeated. Stripping parts from the droid, Vader repairs his body until he's ready to face his foe once more. Meanwhile, Infalar makes his way to Ambala City, built on a vast dam, in search of his ship. Having seemingly killed Vader, Infalar plans to do the same to his Sith Master. His ship, however, is in need of repair by the local mechanic, so he must wait. Once again, however, he senses a presence, this time recognising it as Vader. He was back. Infalar launches himself to the top of the dam to confront Vader, their weapons meeting yet again. Within a few blows, Infalar once again proves himself superior with the lightsaber, flooring Vader. Blaster shots interrupt them though, as the city guard order both the Jedi and the Sith to stand down. With contempt, Vader sweeps them over the side with the force, only for Infalar to catch them and gently release them a few levels down. Vader sees his compassion as a weakness to be exploited. Using the Force, Vader breaks the supports of one of the key structures directing water, threatening to wash away innocent civilians in the process. It takes all of Infalar's power and concentration to hold back the water. It is then a simple task for Vader to remove the lightsaber from Infalar's side. Vader then uses the Force to hold Infalar above the side, slowly choking him. He begs for the civilians of Ambala City to be spared in exchange for his life. Infalar's concentration slips, allowing more water to start flowing. Vader lets Infalar see the structure break completely, flooding the city and taking thousands of lives with it, before breaking his neck. His body is unceremoniously dropped on the devastated city as it washes away. Vader has what he came for. Back aboard the repaired ship, Vader is nearing on the completion of his mission. Under orders of the Emperor, he must return to where this story started, back to Mustafar. Deep within Mustafar is a locus for the dark side. It is here Vader must head to to finish a transformation of the Kyber Crystal. It is here they will be corrupted, and it is here they will be made to bleed. Following the calls from the dark side, Vader finds a cave covered in ominous symbols. He places the crystal on the table. Manipulating the force with the kyber crystal causes an eruption of force, flinging Vader into a stone wall. Mask broken and human eye exposed, Vader comes to a horrible realisation. He puts the crystal back into the hilt and reassembles it. Back on Coruscant, Vader bows before the Emperor. His mission is complete. He reveals his lightsaber before Palpatine. Not red, but green. The Emperor attacks, his red saber slashing at Vader, but it is the student who is victorious as Vader strikes a killing blow. A contemplative Obi-Wan sits watching the horizon. His thoughts are interrupted by a presence he has not felt for some time. Immediately, he draws his lightsaber. Vader removes his helmet, kneels and waits for the finishing blow. Obi-Wan raises his saber, but lowers it, as he sees his former Padawan, Anakin. Back to reality, Vader picks himself up again. Clasping the crystal, Vader refuses to believe what may be, instead enforcing his own will on the crystal, showing it how things are, showing it pain, showing it suffering. Blue electricity explodes from the crystal, but at the core, it is red. Vader returns to Coruscant, walking into the throne room. Vader slams two royal guard into the windows with brute force. Standing before the Emperor, Vader reveals his saber. Red. <laughs>